Hi everybody, this is Chris. This is Matt. And we're back for another show. Yay! Yay! We're going to be talking about, if you can see on the screen to my... Oh man, this is confusing you, to me. You can't do it either. It's okay, don't feel bad. No one, my no left, one has mastered It's my this. left, but it's it's really my right, so it's stage left. I got it. All right. Only Only podcast professionals or YouTube professionals have mastered left and right in a webcam. Yeah, that is not us. No. I had the same problem... Like when I taught martial arts, we're already off the rails. We'll talk about this in a second, too, how we go off the rails. Like you're standing, you're facing the class, and you're like, kick with your right foot. Should you kick with your right foot, or should you kick with your left foot so you're on the same side as the rest of the class? No matter what I did, half the class always got it wrong. I just invariably... <laughs> Well, I can tell you that when I was in karate class, when I was in, I think, kindergarten or first grade, <laughs> my mom had to draw a star on my left hand so I would know which one to punch with. So I think maybe that's a student problem and not a teacher problem. I had, I just recently showed my daughter, like, the left makes an L. Yeah, that's so now she, blowing. Yeah, she's like, oh, hey, yeah. So now I've, I've caught her checking a couple times, which makes me happy because now she can figure it out herself and I yeah, you've done your job as a parent. You I'm, can just I'm coast good. now until she goes to college. Coast to college, yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's. I'm not. We're not going to start again. We're keeping all that because that is part of the show. The show is a conversation. Uh, we're going to talk about Magic Carpet today, a 1994 game from Bullfrog. We're going to talk about Bullfrog today. But what yeah. I don't want anyone to think is that this is a review. This is not a review. It's two assholes who play a game for a month. And come back and share their thoughts, insights, feelings, whatever about the game. And sometimes we take those thoughts and we follow them either into something about games or life or something else. It is completely a book club style format. So please don't take it as a review. Yes. Especially don't. if we don't like your game. Right. Don't And don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. I feel like we need to warn that for this game, but I'm also not sure we need to, which we'll also talk about in a second. Well, if you hated it, I am going to drive to your house and punch you in the face. We'll talk no, about I'm, that I'm in just a kidding. second. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I had mixed feelings about it, too, it, to be honest. I was going to say, if that gets you up here, I hated it. I'll see you in eight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring portillos. <laughs> Woo! Um, one of the other things we're not, because we've gotten a couple requests for this, and I want to kind of cover it. Uh, for the most part, the games need to be over 20 years old. We don't want to cover anything modern or recent or new. Some people are like, but Nox Archaeus. Nox Archaeus is being built on Apple II hardware. Yep, that gotcha. Is, that is ancient. But it's also why we didn't cover Scald. And if you're somebody who likes our channel, you should go check out Scald against the Black Priory. You probably will really dig that. He's making yeah. it really feel like a Commodore game, but using Unity and it runs on modern hardware. So yeah. it looks slick. I'm excited about it. I'm super excited about it. It looks good. The combat looks solid. Uh, we really struggled with, is this something we're going to do, but decided to keep the show on the format it is. That's why you won't see it here. But if you are one of our viewers, go check it out. You'd probably dig it. Yep. We also don't do console games. We've had a couple requests for some Game Boy games and some Super Nintendo games. Sorry. Part, part of Part of me regrets that, but I think just logistically it would be super challenging. Logistically, it'd be super challenging, and there's a ton of channels already out there who do console games. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm sure we'd get more views, but that's never been what this channel's about. So yep. we're going to keep sticking to PC, and that means anything with a keyboard. Uh, Commodore, Apple II, IBM, DOS, Windows, that sort of stuff. All right. Uh, now that I think all that bookkeeping's out of the way, Magic Carpet. Yeah. Um, this, this is probably one of the most Peter Molyneux games I've ever played. And I don't think he was involved in it. Oh, I'm sure he was. I mean, he comes from Bullfrog, but when I looked at the devs and such, because I looked it up too, because I'm like, is Peter on this? Oh um, my god. I I just assumed it was because it was so like his wheelhouse. Wow, because it has it has everything. It's the most Peter Molyneux game without him being involved in it. Whoa. Are you googling it? Like I'm googling. It? I'm googling it, but I also just noticed I had the sound on still. So there's this epic oh. 
in the oh, background yeah. droning. Oh, well, sorry. No, that's okay. It wasn't you. That was me. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, yeah, when we go through the designers, John T. Barnes, Sean Marison, Derry Mead, Daniel Russell, Alex uh, Trowers, Sean Cooper, Mark Huntley, Russell Shaw was the composer. Not a Peter no. Molyneux to be found. Because it's got everything that he is all about. It's got wind noise in the background, even, like populace. <laughs> it's got terrain-altering spells. It's got this idea about restoring balance and mana and, like, all the stuff that's in, like, his, I, uh, it's, like, totally his thing. I think this comes back to it being, you know, from a time where studios shared within the studio that they were it was a small enough studio that they recycled parts back and forth with each other um and this game really made me think about bullfrog games because of Mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying like they all share a certain amount of this something and i had to sit down and ask myself what is it they share what is it i'm i'm sitting here struggling with and looking at and thinking about and I think, whoops. That's not what Whoa. Whoa. Easy there, fella. I know. That is not what I wanted to do at all. Um, Bullfrog takes and just writes down a bunch of good ideas and throws them in a game and hopes a good game comes out of it. Hmm. Yeah, so, that sounds right. There's a bunch of ideas I really love in this game. There's a bunch of things I really love in this game. And by the fourth world, I was bored out of my mind. Interesting. I I played this a lot when it came out. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and I I think I probably liked it more. But I will say, coming back to it, I did I struggled with it a little bit, specifically when it comes to controls and like interface. Uh, but I think conceptually it holds up. And what, like, one thing I noticed uh, reading about this game online, and like I posted about it in our subreddit, mm. there's a lot of people who just did not understand this game. That's a definite theme with with this game is that it's weird at first to understand like the mechanics of it, what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. how it operates, why your guy looks like he's wearing whipped cream on his head and has no eyebrows. You know, there's yeah. just a lot of questions with this one. Well, it's at, a, it's at that weird early 3D stage, but thankfully they were doing most of it in the 2D polygons. The 3D is really only the terrain and the stuff. Yeah. Um, and the thing from the time that I think needs to be sort of pointed out is that this is one of the first games that took your first personness out of a corridor, out of an enclosed space, and put you out in a big open area. So that was mm-hmm. really novel at the time. It's not as novel now. I mean, it, some right. of my ooh from this is lost because that I'm watching this out of the corner of my eye. Let's talk about the fact that you have to turn on the graphics. I think that says a lot about when this came out. Because I think, like, if you had, like, a 3D card in 1994, you were, like, the coolest shit on the block. Mm-hmm. And, and they came in these giant boxes with, like, jets on them. And it was a big deal to have a 3D card. And most people didn't. But, no. yeah, you have to manually, like, if you go buy this, it's, like, R to increase the resolution. That's, like, the first thing you should do. Yep. Uh, and then th- there's a couple F keys that you hit to turn on clouds and shadows and all that other shit. But you should definitely do it because it looks so much better. Right. And then there's the 3D thing, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, in a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, Because you could get 3D glasses. And it looks like there's a VR set. If you go back and watch me selecting controllers, it's like, did they have VR for this? Which would be awesome and would take this game. Like, I would no longer be confused about whether I like this game if it was VR. It had head tracking. Like it used the the for, the VFX one headset. I mm-hmm. downloaded the manual for this. The VFX okay. one virtual headset, um, and the Cyberpunk controller. <laughs> so you could do like you could do quasi VR and VR. like maybe if if some smart person with a Vive out there wants to mess around and make this work on the Vive, it would it would probably be pretty cool. 
It really would. Like you might never stop throwing up though. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> because one, one thing I noticed, um, you, you really have to mess with your DOS box CPU cycles with like control F 11 and control F 12 or shift, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever it is. Google it. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but it, to me, it never feels smooth. Even, even if you crank up, it feels fast, but never really smooth. And and I know that's just because of the age, but I, I don't think I would have a good experience with this in VR for that reason. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. If it just feels always a little bit framey. Yeah, you can watch it kind of forward. Yeah. And I mean, it was at an era where this was new. Right. So it just, I'll dole out slack all day for that. This giant yeah. open fly around on a carpet. You feel like you're on a skateboard in the air. And that's yep. really kind of cool. Um, yep. And like, they, they, the music is kind of like Middle Eastern sounding. But they did a good job not making it horribly racist. I was going to say, I don't it's, it's know. It's not really, like, a lot of these 90s games that are, like, culturally themed are just really racist. tone deaf and insensitive. And this, it, like, it is a little bit, but it's not, like, egregious like uh, yeah. like so many other games. Right. I mean, it's, it's using the trappings, but... Um... You see so little of them, and none of them rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. So good good for you, Bullfrog, for not doubling down and making it right. crappy. Really? Like, I got to feel bad about enjoying it later. Right. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to come up with an example of what would make this racist without making me sound racist. So we're going to just keep <laughs> it's impossible. trucking right on by. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there are things they could have done to make it bad. But I don't feel they did that with this. So I'm kind of happy with it. Um, yeah. I'm watching the terrain deform here. That was one of the things that caught my eye. Like you blast something with a fireball and the terrain deforms under the thing. Yeah. I carved swaths through the world. Yeah. That's really satisfying. <clears throat> and so, mm -hmm. so like we should talk about what this game is about because I, like I said, a lot of right, people we're talking were about the about game, it. but yeah, we're not, what's the point, what's going on, what's happening. So what you're trying to do is claim mana, which are those gold, balls and when you claim them they turn silver and later there's enemy wizards that turn them different colors you're right um and you can also claim the houses and and there's like a, a variety of different houses and then when you kill monsters they they drop mana mm -hmm. and so you claim them with that uh special spell and that's really like the main thing that you're doing and the rest is just like defending that or uh, you build, there's like a spell that builds a castle where you store it. And then you have this balloon that goes around and picks up the mana that you've claimed. So you don't have to fight the other wizards for it. Right. So it, it is strange because when you start, you feel like, well, what I'm going to be doing here is flying around and blasting stuff. Right. Uh, and you're not like you're, you're essentially harvesting mana and that's supposed to blah 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 restore balance of the world or whatever did you ever play brutal legend no what's that uh jack black is like a guitar guy and he goes into this weird guitar world and like fights enemies and meets like ozzy osbourne and is this a dream you had are you sure this is a game <laughs> check it out it's a game and a lot of people had a hard time with the game because it looks like it's a third person action game and what it is is an rts it's ah. a fun game but it plays like a third-person RTS game. Interesting. I feel that it, 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 as you were describing this, it made me think of that because this game looks like a shooter. Mm -hmm. It's a collection game. Yep. And there's shooter aspects, especially later yes. when, <laughs> excuse me, when the you have enemy wizards. And we'll mm -hmm. probably, t I don't know if that's in your, in the it is. playthrough. Okay. I, I, if not, we'll go to a part where we find one. Cause I've got about two hours of play in this. I've got a lot of video for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we'll talk about the enemy wizards too. Uh, one of the things talking about the mana that I want to say that I found really like, I didn't notice it at first, but once I noticed it, I couldn't stop looking at it. So the mana is these gold balls, right? Mm -hmm. But they're 2D sprites. Right. 
So they're just sprites pasted on, you know, given little sticker spots on. They still took the time to make them roll downhill. Right. And they also, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm 99% sure this is true. They also, if they roll down a hill, they'll form a larger ball. The small ones. They can. You, balls can like clump together and form yeah. a new bigger ball. So, yeah. So good job on that because. It, uh, like you can see it rolling around there trying to find the low spot. Yeah, that's really great. Um, and and I, what I like about this too is some of the strategy elements, um, mm-hmm. like ma- managing your castle. Like people will attack your castle. People attack. I think they attack the balloon. They will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and you have to like decide. Okay, how much mana do I want to leave laying around to kind of like bait this guy to come get it so I can blast him? How much do I want to like you know, make a balloon early and risk it getting destroyed. And yeah, there, there's some good strategy elements in, in the gameplay. Yeah. Uh, but they also don't beat you over the head with it. Like if you just plow ahead, it'll be a little harder, but you can do it. You can, yeah. you can, you know. Yeah. This look, but, he looks like he's trying to, like you just won the board and he's looking at you like you asshole. I know. It's like it's like cold or blue steel from uh yeah. from that movie. What's that movie called? Uh, uh, Zoolander. Zoolander, yes. Yeah. But yeah, he's got no eyebrows. Like you you couldn't you couldn't give the guy some eyebrows? Right. Well it's well, creepy. It is creepy. He's got him in the picture. Yeah. Maybe he's off with by the, the fireball way. spells. Oh my god, I... <laughs> that could be that is the worst menu. <laughs> Thank it's God so you dumb. said that. I was like, oh, don't oh. tell me he's gonna be like, I like how it's an interactive uh, no, no, no. No, it's no, horrible. No, no. It's horrible. I have ended up restarting my game a couple times because I was clicking on the wrong thing. It took me a while to yep. learn the menu. That is the a other, bad menu. The other thing I wanted to do was save mid-level. And if you even like think about hitting the escape key, you're restarting. Like, mm-hmm. Don't hit the escape key ever. Yeah. Unless you really want to quit. Right. So that was kind of a disappointment because I'm like, I'm doing well. I'm going to save it. No, no, you're not. Nope. Nope. Um, uh, Cause some of these take a long time. Like you're, you have to collect a lot of mana and deal with all these wizards and things. And you got to find the spells each level. Um, That's so important. Yeah. And, and they're in these little bases. Like you yep. can't even create your castle to store stuff into like the first three spells you've got to find on the first level. They give you no spells to start with. You're just flying around. Yep. I yeah. think that is a huge mistake. You think you should have them out, out of the gate? I think at least some, they should have given you more spells faster. I think the really interesting spells, creating a volcano or doing... Right. Or even like have like the first level be a fight against some big thing that you're going to like lose or something, but you have all your spells. And so yeah. you can just go to town at the beginning and then they take it away and walk you back. Normally, I'm not a proponent of taking stuff away, but they're burying the lead. You can create a volcano. Right, and it's quite spell. awesome. Yes. Yeah. I don't have video of that, by the way. But, I mean, you are really feeling like a powerful wizard at the end of this. And, and my first spell is a tiny fireball, the ability to actually have a base that they should have just given me, and a spell to turn claim mana. Yeah. Not feeling it. You know what I mean? And then yep. we're getting to some of the spells later, and the spells are go forward faster or go backward faster. And mm-hmm. I can barely control you. I don't want to go faster. <laughs> right. That that to me is the where where I was frustrated and, and did not enjoy this game as much as I wanted to. Because yeah. <clears throat> I, at first I tried to play with the keyboard and mouse. Oh, yeah. That was just an abject failure. No. Like it, it was not fun. It was frustrating. Uh, the experience with the controller is okay once you learn how yes. to make him go. And like surprisingly, it's like a you hit a button and then like up, I right. think. But you have to be holding the button, otherwise you're just like yawing up and down. Right. Or pitching up and down. So you can change your speed and you can like or, or you, and you can move or you can fire which makes dueling an enemy wizard re- 
really hard. Like, you can't strafe and be shooting at him with the controller. Right. You, it, it's a separate action to speed up and slow down, which, which sucks. It does suck. And, and like, the first five minutes, you're going to be sitting there just trying to figure out how to make him go. Right. But to me, the bigger problem was the spell selection. Like, you can do it with the numbers, mm-hmm. and that's far easier than the menu. But it does but you mean you to, take your hand off the controller. You have to take your hand off the controller and cycle around. And you have to know, like, okay, I, you know, my my speed spell is five, so I, you know, y- you have to know exactly what you want to do. And when you're in a major like firefight with someone, mm-hmm. that's not the problem you want to have. You want to have all that stuff like r- very readily available. Well, so and, that to me was frustrating. And notice, first level, we're on the first board right here. You can only have one spell ready at a time. Second board, for some reason. You can have two spells ready. And you might be asking yourself, wait, didn't I see you finish this level? Yes. Go back to hear what we talked about the menu, and I ended up restarting the goddamn level and had to yep. play it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, that menu is a, just really bad. Like, the, it's not obvious what the icons mean. That just sucks. And you can't remap the keys. Um, if you could even remap the keys... Mm-hmm. I'm I'm sold. I like I could then do my strafing and firing and moving and really feel in control of the guy. You always feel like you're fighting with the interface, and it just yeah. <sighs> what could have been a great game is at best mediocre, and it's almost completely due to the control. Yep. And there's so there's so many good elements here like i i the spells they kind of like auto target yeah but not completely so you have to be somewhat accurate and you get a feel for it which is i think a good design decision it can be frustrating but like if you're on a magic carpet launching spells that's kind of how it would probably be right like it it, and it feels like it makes sense in the game yeah there's a little aim assist but again like you said you're kind of turreted on your hand i mean you could fly this way and point that way so yeah you know there's a little i think that's nice i think the aim assist is nice um what'd you think of the enemies in this game i like the number of them Mm -hmm. um but again takes sort of so long to get to them i kind of ended up not caring a lot uh I really, really, really hated the the birds and the bees in this game. <laughs> and that, like you don't have to be Sigmund Freud to figure that one out, but mm-hmm. but they they like attack you and you. It's really hard to get away from them, and then yeah, you have to like find the right speed to be moving backward, mm-hmm. and then you can unload on them and kill them. Uh, but when they're attacking you and you hear that stupid bird screeching and you're just like getting hit and and spinning around frantically and backing up and yeah. going forward. That's a that's a bad experience, but right. uh, it does feel dangerous. But it got me thinking about how I hate the birds in every video game I've ever played. <laughs> There's never a good bird. Yeah, it's they're flying, they're like, you're not, and yep. it's just there's this sort of unfair advantage to them that is always annoying. Even in this game where you are flying, they're flying faster and more maneuverable. Yep. Um, no, I mean. Like I liked, like I had a skeleton army raid my castle once. That was pretty cool. I got to the um, apes that were throwing boulders, the dragons yeah. that fly up and down. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of enemy choices and a lot of sprites they put into this to make the enemies. Um, and, and I'll say, like, I, I know you were kind of lamenting, not so much lamenting, but but y- you were talking about how you wish the world was. Yes. One big world and how like I, I agree with that, but I will say the the other thing I really thought was great is as kind of dubious as the pacing is, they do a good job introducing new elements like that as it goes and the the houses that the citizens live in change and, mm-hmm. and like it's varied enough that you know the I it think keeps you wanting have, to go. Yeah, I think you could have done that by having like a radius that goes out from your castle. Mm-hmm. And have you have to push and maybe claim castles or something like, you know what I mean? That like, would be cool. 
do something where you still get that sense of progression. But I feel like I save a world and I leave it. And the side effect of that is all the worlds physically are very small. You will circumvent them several times in a five, six minute playthrough of the level. Uh, yeah. So there's, so there's no exploration. There's no, oh, dragons live here. Oh, this lives here. You go, you pop the monster, and like, oh, there it is. And then it's... Right. You know what I mean? There's no... I don't know. I never felt... I never really got that exploration ting that I really look for in games. To me, that's a huge thing I personally want and mm-hmm. never felt like I got it. You want to know something really awesome that is like a little known feature of this game that I completely forgot about? Hmm. You can take any file on your computer and Magic Carpet will turn it into a level. Any file, regardless of the extension. There, there's like a, I forgot what it is. It's like maphack.exe. If you run that and choose a file, it'll, I haven't tried it on, on this one, but I remember doing it uh, when I first played it and it was a blast. Like, it's really cool. Like, oh, this is my resume. If it were a, you know, magic carpet world. Are you looking? Oh yeah, I'm looking. That's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, it's really neat. Uh, let me find it here. I think it's maphack. Yeah, it's maphack. Uh, yeah. There's there's a good old games forum post on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Any PBM file on your system can be used. What the hell's a PBM? Oh, a compressed LBM file. What the hell? <laughs> okay, so I was wrong. I thought it was any file for some reason. But yeah, pretty cool. What huh. the hell is a PBM file? Then down the rabbit hole we go. Everybody yep. watch while we Google. <laughs> Yep. Uh, text base and contain mainly ones and zeros. LBM is a deluxe paint bitmap image. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Changes but, to a portable bitmap, which is a PBM file. Okay, so I was wrong, but uh, but still, it means you can file. paint your own level. Yeah. Well, that's kinda yeah, cool. it's kind of like a random, you know, mm-hmm. level generator, which. Is cool. Like that's right. a neat little feature, and you could keep playing it. Uh, yeah. Forever keep, if you wanted. Right. Keep giving your stuff, you know, and share those with your friends. And, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice touch. Um, I, w- I really wish we could have played this network because I think it would be a lot of fun. It would be interesting. Because there is that strategy aspect, and I, I found the combat with the other wizard to be largely unsatisfying. Very. Uh, because you can totally get a sense for what the AI is doing and what it's going to do. It just flies around to any mana, claims it, and like once in a while, if there's nothing around and you're there, then it will attack you. Yeah. So it largely becomes just chasing the dude. And they move so mana. fast. Yeah. And it, it really gets frustrating. I managed, I always killed mine by like luring him near a monster and then letting him fight the monster while I blast and him then in the back. Him. And yep. he just stands there fighting the monster while you shoot him. Yeah, so. that is totally like the only way to kill them, really, because they, they move so fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you could like switch spells easier, maybe it would be more varied. Holy cow, that's a lot of birds you're dealing with right there. Yeah. Um, so that that part of it was unsatisfying to me, but I think if you had another person, it would be really fun. Could be, yeah. Because, you know, that's just you don't know what someone else is going to do. Like you you can totally predict what the computer is going to do. Right. But sadly, it you probably need like Novell networking or whatever or, or a <laughs> null modem cable and you know. Oh, Novell. IPX networking. There we go. Oh, back in the day. Right. Just used to networking just used to be different. The same, but you know, different. Yeah. Um, uh let's see what we got here. My notes. Yeah, I'm just kind of going through my stuff too. I know it's supposed to be the longer game, but it's Bullfrog. Um They were right. I, and, and like like, this game really helped me just kind of look at all the Bullfrog games and go, yep, this is how I feel about pretty much all of them. Uh, there's some great ideas. There's some 
bad execution and there's not enough seams between them to stitch it together into something that really completely feels cohesive and whole. Mm -hmm. I think they got, they probably got better at it. Like I, if you think about like dungeon keeper was bullfrog, right? Yes. And, and that had some, some dubious elements, right? But it, it did feel more cohesive than this, I think. Well, dungeon keeper felt cohesive, but you think about all the things you just flat out didn't use it. Like we That's talk true. about it was when we played it, it was um, like it starts out as a sim game, but really it's a puzzle game. Right. This That's seems true. like a shooter, but really it's a collection game. Uh, yeah. There's the first person aspect you can use in Dungeon Keeper, which you do in a couple places to make your life easier. But for the most part, it mostly goes unused. Yeah, um, that's true. That's very true. So there's... And like so, I felt the same way about Dungeon Keeper. I felt like, eh, I like it still. Yeah. But not as much. Not as much so as would, I remember. Would you tell our, our viewership to go try this out or not? I would sort of quiz them first. <laughs> a, a qualified yes. A qualified, uh, what are you looking for? What are, you, what are you trying to get out of uh, this game? What, what are you hoping? Like, if it's a nostalgia thing, maybe not. Maybe leave it there. Uh, you probably remember it better than it is. That's, that's fair. I, I think I, that I would recommend people play this just because the concept is so strange. Yeah. And, like, different. And, and it's really unique. And... And it, like, graphically, it held up pretty well, I would say. Better lot, than I expected. A lot better than I expected. And it's cool to, like, deform the train. And you have some kind of cool, like, dogfight moments where you're, mm -hmm. you know, where you feel like you're in a serious, you know. And there's, like, these weird statues fight. I just passed. So there's, like, an interesting lore and story and everything like that going on here. Um and that's why I said a qualified yes. If, you, if you're just going, oh, mm -hmm. I remember this being so awesome back in the day. I'd like to play it again. Maybe sit this one out. If you're like, I love the quirkiness of it, or I want to try something from that era that was experimenting or new or, or you know, something that changed the way we did things, even if it itself wasn't the best at it, yes, mm -hmm. go play Magic Carpet. Yeah. And then play Terminal Velocity. And then play Terminal because Terminal um, Velocity was fun as hell. Terminal Velocity is... I remember it being fun as hell. I played it recently. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun as hell. It's still fun. It's still fun. Um, term if you want something like this, this sort of free world, fly around, go to another world, uh, Terminal Velocity would be better. I'd, I'd rather... I'd more easily recommend that than this. Which is too bad because I like the concept of a flying skateboard. Right, right. I, I, the other thing that bugged me about, the, well, it's not that it bugged me. I, I didn't like the world map very much. Like it, it, it gives you a lot of information, but it's kind of hard to see. Mm -hmm. Um, it, and it's you, you can't really like make good decisions based on what it's telling you. No. Uh. You, it's okay if, if finding enemies mm -hmm. and where your balloon is and stuff. Um, Piles but of man, mana. yeah. Like I can't, I can't see the spells. Maybe I should have tried a full screen or something. But like looking for the the spells, they're like tiny little red dots, and they get lost. And yeah, I don't think I ever really, you know, use the map to find the spells. Uh, yeah, you just kind of find them flying around. Right. So. Did you like this? Did you like the way they doled out spells, or would you have rather mm. seen more or a different way to deliver? No, them? I didn't like it. Um, I, I just felt uh, I felt like I I always like you're always going to need the mana claiming spell, mm -hmm. and it just becomes a burden to switch between it. And, and like I I wish I would have had more more spells at the beginning too. Because you get locked into using the fireball and and the mana spell. Yep. Um, they could have gotten rid of that mana spell completely and just had you have to touch the mana. Yeah, that would have been a better way. 
Or yeah, just like that. give me another button that is just always monoclaim and don't mm -hmm. make me toggle between them. Yeah. Um, because th there were a lot of times that I knew the spell. This is more about the switching again, mm -hmm. uh, where I knew the spell I wanted, but I just couldn't make it do it. Right. And maybe that says something about me as a gamer. Like maybe I'm just not good at that, but it was annoying to me. Well, it hides it in a menu, you know. That menu is not responsive either, no. by the way. Like with the controller, it's abysmal. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I feel like you could either control your carpet reasonably. I won't even say well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or you're demonstrating here. <laughs> you can go, we should talk about that, though. Like, you cannot crash. Yeah, right. You know? So it's not like you're constantly bumping into something and hitting. If you're kind of a sloppy flyer... Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I never felt like I had good control were... of my attitude. Yeah, the draw distance sucks. I was looking at that too just now. Yeah. I I know what you... I, were you saying that your, uh, your altitude, height? Altitude, oh, yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that too. Like, if I could choose, I would just be higher up most of the time. Mm -hmm. As you're doing here, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Eh, it's fun. I'd, I'd, say, I'd say try it. Yeah. If if you're interested at all, I don't know. It, I I think the qualifier would also be how much are you going to spend on it? Mm. Like what is it going for right now on GOG? I I got it for like a dollar seventy five on Good Old Games, and I feel it like that's real a cheap. reasonable value. <laughs> it was on sale. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like six bucks now. I don't know that I'd spend six bucks on this. Hmm. Which I sounds harsh, but two fifty, eh, okay, sure. You and know, like you get the expansion, but honestly, like you're done. Yeah, yeah. After like ten levels, meh. And that's part of why I don't like I don't share the value of it. Maybe if it's not anymore, not with the number of games we have available to us, and that we've talked about this in the past. Mm -hmm. When you've got this many games available to you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Why? I, you know, I, I will say though, if you were one of those kids that had this and you didn't understand it, and you'd like pull it up and be mystified by it, I those are, I would recommend those people get, go back and yes. give it a shot. Look through the manuals, look online, talk to us. If you just didn't understand it, I do think I had a better time with it this time because I was able to understand it more and I had a controller that worked. And Because, mm -hmm. um, like, we've talked about this a couple times too, not on the show, but uh, regarding Duke 3D. Mm -hmm. When you and I played Duke 3D, it was keyboard only. Right. We didn't we never touch the mouse. Never touch the mouse. It wasn't until Quake that we're like, mouse for look. What? Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a stupid idea. And I remember your friend, I don't remember who he was. We went over to his house and he just schooled us. Not even mm -hmm. a little. It was like a hundred to five, a hundred to three, a hundred. Yep. Like, it was in like Quake or Unreal or something. Yeah. I think Quake. But yeah, it was Yeah painfully embarrassing and he's like it's the mouse it's just the mouse and then you and i went home and just drilled with the mouse until we got yep. it. <laughs> like all right and now you can't now i can't go back no no yeah and i wonder like if if we had taken the time to maybe get good at the keyboard controls on this if it would be better like maybe i don't know maybe it, I, it sure was a bad experience though yeah. when i tried it I didn't enjoy it. The mouse goes backwards to me. Um, like pushing up turns you up, which is not. I'm one of those guys who's got to invert everything. If you're honestly, if you're a modern gamer, you will probably find an easier time with the mouse than I do. Uh, I have a my sister-in-law's boyfriend. Um, every time we're playing something on the Switch or something with a console controller. He has to go into settings and flip them back to standard because I'm used to like a flight stick. You push forward, it pitches down. You pull 
back and mm-hmm. rips up. He's the opposite. He's got to have it. I'm like, kids these days, crazy right? Crazy to me. Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. You know, you're not wrong, kids. <laughs> Crumudgeons, two crumudgeons discussing video games. Kids these days. That's that's why we talk about games that are over 20 years old because no kids play these, so they're not getting their feelings. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Some kids gonna be like these two motherfuckers. I totally. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I Go totally ahead. play these games. Yeah, put it in the comments. We love our comments, even the ones that don't love us. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anything else you got th- on this? I think that's it. I think that's all I have to say about Magic Carpet. Yeah, it's it's a game with a lot in it, but not really a lot to talk about. A bunch of good ideas, but they don't fit together well. You'd probably like it, but don't spend a lot of money on it. Uh, it's an interesting for a point in time, but other stuff does stuff better. And yeah, I think that's yep. a good summary of all of that. So. I'm going to turn off that, and I'm going to turn on this, and I'm going to... Now, our next short game is Theme Park. Also Bullfrog. Also Bullfrog. Uh, There will probably be some similar discussion to this, but there will be other things that are new, and we'll talk about those things with those things, as those things, and things, in about two weeks. Um, Yep. Yeah, not going to talk much more about that right now. Yep. Oh, yeah. But the next game. Interstate 76. Very, uh, very excited. Loved this game when I first played it. Terrified to play it again. I know, right? Uh, I don't want it to be bad, but I can totally see it being bad. Yeah, this is one of those where this will be an interesting month. Uh, I try to get one car battle game in a year now due to auto duel. That's my <laughs> sure. one per show. Uh, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. High hopes, low expectations. This came out around the same time as Mech Warrior 2, if I'm remembering right. Right, and we struggled with that. And we like, struggled th- with that. This is going to be probably a joystick or uh, controller kind of deal, and who knows how that's going to go. Well, I got a feeling one of the reasons you loved it back in the day was you could put your wheel on it. Right. Do you have a wheel still? You know I do. Okay. I have totally. Oh, have that's a wheel. right, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do not, so it'll yeah. be interesting to see. Um, we'll try it. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Maybe but, uh, this is the game that'll get me to buy a wheel. Maybe. Well, I'll try it and let you know. But man, that thing is a bear to get out. There's like three different pieces, <laughs> and there's like 800 wires. And it's just a big production. Oh, you I know. clamp it to your desk. So maybe right. I'll just <sighs> maybe I won't do it. I'm too tired all the time now to Said do stuff like tired. that to have fun. Too tired for fun. The other day I saw you, you were leaning on a post. I said, "But I'm tired." <laughs> <laughs> And you're welcome, the three people who know that song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, delightful. Well, it's our age, so maybe a lot more people know that song. But, yeah, right. All the uh, curmudgeons. The curmudgeons. Those two assholes with opinions. Uh, yeah, Interstate 76 next. Play along with us. Play along with us, please do. Uh, uh, you mentioned the Reddit earlier. Uh, the Reddit's not us. It's not under our control. We've kind of talked about this in the past, about, like, fan groups or things like that. And I kind of wanted to uh, explain why we don't do that. I know this is sort of at the end, tacking something on. Uh, I believe any fan community should be uh, self-growing. It shouldn't be something we organize, because maybe someday you guys hate us for some reason. And that should be likely to say it. Likely. Likely. Very likely. There should never be a sense of we are in control of what you guys do outside of us. Uh, Right. So... That is up to you. Maybe it'll be good for us. Maybe it'll be bad for us. Um, we don't know. We don't know. But but we'll we, hang out there. Like we'll, we'll come in. We'll make not... stops and say hi. Yeah, yeah. We're we're real happy. It's there. We're thrilled. It's there. But yeah, yeah we're gonna, I'm, it's I'm not really us. Happy it's there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll still be doing posts in the comments. I'm still on Twitter. Uh, for now, I'm doing less lately. I I can't take the world. I never um, could. So. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye everybody. Bye. <laughs>
Big thank you to all of you watching, sharing, liking, subscribing, suggesting games, commenting on our videos, or supporting us on Patreon. We appreciate all of your support and look forward to sharing many more videos with you. Thank you again.